All right, so let's get into it. Um, if you've got any questions, please feel free to, I guess, ask along the way, although it's probably better if we leave questions to the end, um, especially if people are putting them on the chat because it will be easier for me to look on them there. All right, so accessible learning student services support. Right, so we're going to start with an acknowledgement of country. So the University of Queensland, UQ, acknowledges the traditional owners and their custodianship of the lands in which we meet. We pay our respects to their ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. We recognise their valuable contributions to Australian and global society. So in today's session, we're going to be talking about the role of the student advice team the key times for supporting students during the semester and tools and support available for staff as well. So student services, um, for those of you who have seen this building before, it's relatively new. Um, this is where it's kind of like a one-stop shop in a way for all of the students for student services support in regards to a lot of different things. So we have things like counselling, uh, diversity, diversity, disability and inclusion, accommodation advice, financial hardship, international and remote student support, learning support, chaplaincy services, mentoring, volunteering, student staff partnerships and campus activations. Now, obviously the chaplaincy services aren't in the student services building, but they're a part of the student services umbrella. Um, for me as a student advisor, and I would say also for the learning advisors, I know that they take, and the student counsellors, this is the building we all go to when we have appointments booked in with students. So we'll go from building 42 to 41. So next door, so we'll grab our stuff and go over there when we're about to see students for support. Um, this is where all the amb ambassadors are as well, and a lot of the student support officers are there for all the questions that students have. So student advice team. So in August 2021, student services created the student advice team, which consists of advisors previously known under the individual advisors' names of dis uh, diversity, disability and inclusion, international and welfare. So we had different uh, student advisors specialising in these particular areas. Uh, we now have a student advice team that does kind of both of those things. And I guess we'll go more into that as the slides go along. So the key priorities in developing the student advice team are to minimise wait times for students to access an advisor, to maximise the opportunity for program development, to minimise the number of different services student, students need to access for support and um, assist students on a variety of topics and enhance professional development for colleagues. Appointments and support. So this is where I was kind of going down the road of the student advice team being made up of two different student advisor uh, teams. <laughs> so we have the student advisors and then we have the principal student advisors. So this is a new system. I think it was relatively new, has been around for I think a year and a half or nearly two years now. So the difference between a student advisor and a principal student advisor is that student advisors predominantly see same day appointments. So when a student books in with us or say if we see a student on the same day uh, Q, um, we will see them as a one-off appointment and then we may or may not see them again. They're not, we don't do any sort of casework with students. We might see a student and do up a student access plan with them or maybe some exam adjustments, which I think we'll go into later, and then that will be it. The appointments are scheduled for 15 minutes. Now, principal student advisors uh, do... A similar role to the student advisors. However, they have uh, the capacity to spend more time doing case management with students. So if students, for example, have 
um, a disability or a mental health issue that is going to need more long-term support and advocacy. Perhaps they're going to need someone to help uh, have deeper conversations with course coordinators and support workers or whatever may be involved. That's when we book or refer students to principal student advisors because they can see them more long-term. And as I said before, they have they also have scheduled 50-minute appointments, but they can also see them long-term. I think the beauty in seeing principal student advisors as well for students that need more long-term support is that they're seeing the same person, so they're not having to, you know, tell the same story again to different people, which I think can make it a less stressful process and journey overall. So appointment times are determined by the type of support required and complexity of the student needs with the principal student advisors offering long-term ongoing support, which is what I discussed before. So in order for students to make appointments, uh, at this point of time, and this could change again, um, students can phone the number below, which is Student Central, or they can email student services to book appointments. At this point of time, they can also go online um, and book appointments directly with student advisors, not with principal student advisors. So they can either do that or they can come into Student Central and uh, just show up and join a queue and hopefully get seen. So sometimes the queue is really long, sometimes it's really short, it really depends on the time of year and of course what time of the day they go in as well. So generally speaking, um, if they're wanting to go into the queue, I would always advise that they come in sort of earlier on in the day. Um, but, you know, that obviously doesn't suit everyone. So I guess it's just about walking in. Um, they can also phone as well, this number. And um, they can also see us. It doesn't just have to be on campus. They can see us over Zoom and they can also, we can also take phone calls with them as well. Okay, so supporting at the right time of semester. So student service support teams have appointments available throughout the year and help, can help with your questions and concerns. Getting support in a timely manner will help avoid undue stress during your study. So we really try and push this with students when we talk about uh, the services we offer at orientation. So it's really about trying to get them in uh, before the big issues sort of happen. And it's really about... Um, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for here, but it's really just about doing that prevention work before it turns into something bigger than it needs to be. So before semester starts, support with academic adjustments and guidance, advice on setting or finding accommodation, getting ready for study, welcome and induction activities and workshops, uh, things that we cover before the semester starts in order to to help prevent that sort of overload of students that can sort of come towards the end of the semester when they're, you know, they have exams on and they've got assignments due and they've left it too long or they've got things going on. So during the semester, supporting questions around enrollment or withdrawal, uh, talking about work-life, study balance is a big one, welfare and wellbeing support, study skills, planning and time management. Um, before semester ends, it's generally exam adjustments set up before the examination period, support with academic stress and preparing for graduation or moving home, um, especially with international students. So pre-commencement and orientation workshops. So the student advice team runs a series of workshops to support students with commencing or returning to study. So the workshops commence around one month before orientation week and they conclude around week three of classes. So this is supports the students in settling in to UQ. We let them know of the support services available. Um, more so what about what the student services uh, can provide for students. So in pre-commencement, we talk about, of course, information about getting started, accommodation advice, information on events, activities in life at UQ, and then guidance on completing essential training to help provide, provide the best start. 
this is where we also, um, I don't think it's not so much in pre-commencement, but in orientation, we start introducing the other types of advisors we have, such as the learning advisors and the academic advisors and how they can help the students. So in orientation, which we've just um, been through, so sessions include staying safe in Australia and life in Queensland, tips for settling in and making friends, health and wellbeing and health cover for international students, and budgeting tips and study work life balance. Um, you two have a lot of workshops that we offer students throughout the year. So um, a lot of the time the students aren't really aware of them until uh, we bring it up at orientation and, or until they come in and they see us. Um, for some reason, they tend to, to fall through the cracks a lot of the times. But yeah, we really, really um, highlight all of this in the orientation. So academic health and inclusive learning. So these sessions include a tertiary transition toolbox, which are like a workshop for students that support students with autism, how to avoid pitfalls and prosper at uni and academic jumpstart programs that we offer. Okay, tools and support. So this is, uh, yeah, um, this covers a whole range of things, but the student advice team work with students to ensure inclusive and accessible learning is available and in place. So some of these tools and support provide include student access plans, and we call them SAPs, and this is something that I mentioned earlier. Um, you can do, you can look further into what a student access plan covers if you do a, a UQ search, um, Google search. Um, we have, or you can ask me after the presentation, we also have ex exam adjustments where, um, where possible we can make requests for exam adjustments for students, such as having extra time, uh, having uh, rest breaks in the exam time, Say if we have a student that sees us and they have diabetes, um, they might need, they might request to take a particular, you know, a popper or food into the exam, and this is where we help them set up that type of support for them to make their studies, especially their exams, less stressful. So support for students with caring responsibilities as well. So students who might be caring for parents or a child with a disability, or even we even work with um, new mothers and setting up uh, student access plans for them, especially in the first six months. Um, so, you know, that's another thing that we help students with. Working with the library to arrange use of, of assistive technology, recommending and arranging participant or access assistance, and supporting with alternative print services. So students that may have dyslexia, um, hearing impairments, this is all stuff that we cover. So advisors work closely with the course coordinators, library staff and faculty staff, examinations of course, and providers to establish supports for students throughout the semester or for as long as required within the semester. Library support via student services. So the library has a dedicated team ready to support students with equipment, software and space to enable accessible and inclusive learning. The student advice team will need to meet with the student and make recommendations for what support the library can provide. So the following services are provided after student services notifies the library. So things like providing alternative formats of required readings, so, as I said before, the example of having a student that has dyslexia, this is where this sort of falls into place, accessible lockers, assistive, assistive, <laughs> assistive technology training, converting files to accessible format as well. We do quite a bit of this. Census access is a self-service document conversion tool available to all UQ students, staff and alumni. That's a good thing to be aware of as well. Now, just to add to tools of support, things like student access plans and exam adjustments, of course, any sort of adjustments we're needing to request or make for students also have to be um, uh, 
backed up with some sort of medical documentation or documentation from a specialist. So um, the students aren't coming to us and simply asking you for these requests. We also need to have this documentation to back it up as well. So this is kind of, I feel like this is, this is stuff we've already uh, gone through. So this is really talking about the range of supports. So we were talking about student access plans. And these are about uh, a student access plan is adjustments for learning activities and coursework, which covers assessment. This doesn't cover exams. That's in exam adjustments. Um, student access plans also can be created and put into place for when students do placements, especially if they're doing placements. There's some students that might re make requests if their placement is quite a far way away from where they are and perhaps they might be getting receiving treatment and it might be difficult for them to, to be going out that far. That's just an example of something we might do for a student for a placement student access plan. So exam adjustments, as I mentioned before, so this could be for extra working time and breaks. Maybe they might need to bring food in or a fidget spinner or something like that, or we might put them in a separate room. Um, generally speaking, all students that have exam adjustments will automatically be put into a room of no more than 40 students, which a lot of students really appreciate. And sometimes that's kind of all they need. So the um, AT rooms, so this is where we're talking about specific software or hardware that needs to be used. Um, the SAT can provide access to specialist rooms in the library. Scooters can be offered to loan for on-campus use for long-term or short periods of time. Other support, other support equipment include support with access on campus, learning materials, specialist equipment, and then also that liaisoning with academic teaching staff, timetabling, support, et cetera. So it is the responsibility of, of our students to get in touch with us if anything changes with, with their condition, um, their support needs or program. Um, so if you have a student coming to you and they sound like they need extra support, you can of course direct them to student services and then student services then can direct them to uh, the best source of support. So that might be talking to a student advisor or it might be talking to an academic advisor or a learning advisor or booking in with a student counsellor, depending on what it is that they need. Welfare support. So the student advice team provide advice and support for students who find themselves faced with hardship and day-to-day -day issues and concerns which impact their ability to be successful within their study. So of course this encroaches on you know, generally speaking, if they're not, if they're, you know, not having a, a great time overall with their mental health or their physical health, this, of course, will impact on their study. So this is where we try and um, support the students the best we can so that it isn't um, affecting their studies too much. And then, of course, we give the appropriate referrals uh, if they need mental health and if they need more support outside the scope of what we can provide for them. So welfare support is accessed via an appointment by, made by the student. However, welfare concerns for a student can be submitted independently via the welfare check form. On assessment of a student in need, the student advice team can provide support across a number of areas. So this includes financial hardship, um, which covers laptop loans and grants, accommodation support um, within reason. Obviously, we can point students in the right direction and we can provide referrals and talk about different types of accommodation. Uh, however, it's, it, we can't sit down with them and do, you know, applications for houses and stuff like that. That is, that is out of the scope of what we do, but we can definitely give the appropriate referrals and give advice and suggestions on areas to live, you know, reputable websites that they can look on and just tips around private rentals, getting the RTA involved and all that sort of stuff. And a lot of this is discussed in orientation as well. Health and wellbeing, adjusting to life in Australia, Australia settling in at UQ and offshore international student support. 
So staff support. Um, online e-learning, working with, student, with students who have academic adjustments. So yes, there's online e-learning that is, this link is provided to course coordinators and probably I would say the, two, the troops as well because I'm, I think there's discussions had between the course coordinators and the, um, and the tutors in regards to what is going to be support that's going to be putting in place for potential students you may be working with. So the online e-learning is a resource for you guys to be able to look at and go through in regards to how to best support the student or whatever other information that you may need. Um, Sometimes coordinators will get in touch with us as well and maybe ask for more uh, information. However, um, as I mentioned previously, when we create an SAP for a student, it's really about that opening up that portal for them to be able to talk directly with either the, their, their tutor or their academic, um, not their academic advisor, their coordinator in regards to if they need any further support or if the coordinator coordinator may have questions around the type of support that they need. So this covers neurodiversity in the university context and academic adjustments and inclusive learning. Uh, student access plans, resources, training and guidance. Um, there's a training course which has accessibility and inclusion support for high degree research students and then attendance uh, at teaching and learning committees and collaboration with library examination and faculties. So there's a fair there's a fair amount of resources there for you and of course you can always talk to us as well. Okay, so students can access support through the following. So obviously online there's the uh, student uh, student central support. We always say Google UQ Student Central, um, and that gives them, that takes them to a web page which covers all of this information that I've just covered, <coughs> so the types of sources of support, um, you know, the student counselors, the learning advisors, the academic advisors, the whole spiel is in there, um, alongside contact numbers, alongside the student services uh, email address, and of course, where Student Central is located as well. So when they have appointments with us, they will know where to go. So services are free and confidential, of course. Um, the student counsellors, uh, I'm unsure if you're aware, but they offer 10 free sessions a year for students. They are very, very busy. <laughs> um, but students can book in with them as well. Resources and feedback. So session recordings and resources will be available on the ITALI website upon conclusion of Ready to Teach Week. All attendees will receive an email with a link to these resources and a request to complete a short survey on their Ready to Teach Week experience. Okay, so thank you so much for um, listening to my presentation. I hope that it was helpful in one way or another. I'm going to have a look at the chat, um, but feel free to ask any questions if you have any.